let's see if I have my camera working. It looks like I do. Everybody, it is what? Thursday, day four, new agent class 23-005. Woo, let's hope I get it right. How are we doing this morning? Woo! Hey. All right. Let's get it. Let's get it. Right. There we go. I love it. All right. We're ready to get this thing kicked off. And I love a little super tramp because we all need to give a little bit. Anybody know that song? Anybody shake your head? Yes. No, maybe so. Yes. A few of you do. Okay. That's great. That is awesome. All right. <clears throat> so what we're doing today right off the bat is what? We need to fill out our DRB report. And so while we're doing that, I generally will ask everybody how their day went yesterday, hopefully, pardon me, with their upline. So let's go to Ruth. Ruth Joyner, good morning. How are you? I am doing fantastic. How about yourself? I cannot complain because if I did, none of you would even care. But I get it. It's all right. How was your day yesterday with your upline? Did you get a chance to work with them? I did. Um, yesterday, we, let me think, think, think. Um, actually, I had a meeting with Joe. We had a, meet, a, a, a meeting with Joe. And um, yesterday was the, actually the first day that I did not do a sit-in to, you know, to do that. But I did a lot of my, I, what I did yet last night was looked at a lot of the scripts. So that was what okay. I was working on. All right. Since did I, you get a chance to do the homework that we had assigned for yesterday? Um, remind me what that was. Ruth. I'm just at the uh, no, really? just, just so that, that What that tells me is that you didn't do the homework if you don't know what it was, right? I might have done it. So just. just <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I might have done it. That's fair. So if I asked you to do your A1 opening cold right into the camera, talking to all of us no. without no. looking at the script, could you? No, no, no. I, didn't, I, I looked at, I'm, I'm trying to get, because yesterday Monty was able to give us our script. So I was looking at that as opposed to the one that you gave me so I could get myself familiar with that. I'm completely confused. Why would Monty give you a separate script than the one you're required to learn in this class? Well, he passed, he gave, it, gave us our scripts uh -huh. yesterday. So I kind of looked at that one to see what the difference was. Okay. And kind of got caught into that script. It's not so much on our, our script, but it, it, I, I, I apologize. Okay, no worries. And again, I, I defer to your upline if they have a different script that they want you to memorize or do whatever, that's totally fine. Did you memorize the opening of that script? I. And we're still working on it. Okay, no worries. But hey, maybe you did some of the other homework. Does anybody remember what other homework I want to do? Betty Finnegan, you're unmuted, so I'm going to call on you. What other homework did we have to do yesterday? Um, I did not work on it because we had a call with Joe, and then we had a long call with Monty last night. Oh, okay, sorry, you're part of the Monty team. Okay, that's fair. Yeah. Who I knows what homework we had to do yesterday that isn't part of Monty's team? Faye. <laughs> Go ahead, Faye. Well, Faye? I'm actually, I am a part of Monty's team. Oh, but, my goodness. Hold but on. I, okay, but stop. I do know the homework. Uh, no, no, stop, stop, stop. Because if you're part of Monty's team, I don't want to impugn on anybody else who didn't get a chance to do it. So who is not on Monty's team? Edis, is that you? Are you not on Monty's team? I am not. I am part of Alessandro's team. Alessandro Sucorio. Okay, what is or what was the homework yesterday? Uh, to memorize the A1 script and to get EAP running and to have it ready to log into. Okay, so let's go back to Ruth. Ruth, were you able to get EAP downloaded? I was on that call with Monty last night. And after that call, I was kind of done for the evening. <laughs> okay. <laughs> totally understand. Hey, that's all right. I get it. That's why I tell you well in advance so you have a chance to get it done. Okay. All right. I've got I got this is Betty. I got the EAP downloaded. Now oh, I have a download. Betty, Betty's showing up Ruth. Betty, why would you no, do that? I have EAP downloaded. I haven't been able to sign into it. 
Oh, okay. You have the app downloaded. Okay, that's yeah. awesome. Hey, then you're yes, I have the app downloaded too. Yeah, we got that before. Okay. That's See that? Sweet. Ruth, you did the homework, didn't even know it. <laughs> I said, tell me what you did. I'll tell you if I did it. Uh, I love it. Okay. Uh, Sophia, you got your hand raised. What can I do for you? Hi, good morning. So good morning. I could not download e app because I'm working from, from a Mac. So um, I tried with the group and it was not successful. And I was told that I need to get some kind of um, inexpensive PC. So I'm going to look into that this weekend. Well, you um, can either do that or you can do um, what you can do is you can download, let's say, Parallel or any other type of Windows emulation software onto your Mac. Once that's installed, then you could potentially install EF. However, uh, two things are going to happen. Number one, performance of the Mac is going to degrade or slow down. And secondly, there's a huge amount of the hard drive that gets sucked up by the Windows software. Oof. So it's entirely up to you how you want to do it. That's why I want you to check with your upline because they are aware of all these issues and they can navigate with you. Okay. Yeah, she couldn't really tell me much about the Mac. I, I think I'm going to have to get something else. Because okay. I need my Mac for other things, and I can't soak up the um, yeah. the energy and the speed. Okay. okay, totally understand. Gotcha. All right. Uh, let's see. Gigi, did you do the homework yesterday? Um. So I actually just had access to my. So I just got um, access to my Windows computer, and um, I actually told my uh, trainer that you were supposed to. Um, I misunderstood it because I thought we were supposed to do it step by step. So I was like, I'm going to do it in class. But I should have had him help me. But I okay. set up my Windows computer to have that ready. All right. That's awesome. That's good. What about memorizing the A1? Did you do that part last night? Yes, I went through my scripts and um, I focused a little bit more on the PA vet one because that's what we did with the field one. But mm -hmm. yes, I went through all of them. Okay. So are, do you, are you confident you can do the A1 without looking at the paperwork and build rapport and provide your value statement? Unfortunately, no, I'm not confident. <laughs> I'm sorry, being honest. No, no, I, hey, I want honesty. I, I, listen, this is a fire hose we're throwing at all of you. You know, you got a lot you have to do. Uh, so I completely understand that, okay? I totally understand if we have a lot going on. Uh, but yeah. there is one thing you're all going to be required to do by Saturday night. You have to send me that video, okay? And you can't miss that, right? The upline is well aware that you have a video that's due to me by Saturday night. So we're going to go over it tomorrow. You're going to have to get that done to get through the class. Everybody get that? That's the yeah. one thing out of everything we do, you have to do. Edis, what can I do for you? So in the video, when you were reading the script, do you want us to read like A1 through A7 without looking at the script? or is um, there... yeah. No, 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 no. I'll go through okay. that tomorrow and tell you exactly what I want done. The only thing that you ever have to memorize and look into the camera is your opening. So okay. Once you say, hey, I'm going to share my desktop with you, your camera should cut off. I should see your desktop, and that's the only thing I should see from there on out. How many of you watched a presentation yesterday? I just want to pick anybody that watched the presentation. Angel, Angelina, I love how that name goes. All right, Angelina, you watched the presentation yesterday. What, yeah. market, what market was it in? Uh, veteran. Okay, so hopefully we're all aligned. You were in the veteran market. How closely did that presentation follow the PA vet script? It was pretty close. She actually had it up on her screen, you know, where he couldn't see it. She had this the screen where uh, she was able to watch it too. So she was going back and forth uh, to it. So it was it was good to see because even someone that you know the team considers one of their best ones still has the script up to make sure that they're not missing any details. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Who was that? Uh oh gosh, uh, mind you, killing me with names. Uh, we saw I saw uh, two people <laughs> yesterday. So it was uh. You, you want to take a moment? Yes, Lindsay, thank you. <laughs> Lindsay. What, Lindsay. what upline is that in? Uh, Mario or Mario's team, Hezro. 
Mario Hyro. Mario Hyro is just so everyone knows he's he's up here. So below him, there's a lot of different folks. A lot. So. That's why I said we've got we're lucky we have a lot of options yeah. to watch. And mm -hmm. it was basically quick jump into this room. They've got a sale. So uh it's been exciting yeah. the last couple of days. And when you jump into the room, you're actually you have your script up, correct? Mm -hmm. so, or at least you're looking at her script. Okay, good. Yeah. I'm glad to hear it. That is absolutely awesome. Jack, you got your hand up. What can I do for you? Yeah, so I watched, actually, I watched two presentations last night with uh, Sam Siegel, actually. Yeah. And, Sam just uh, went through my class. Did he sell? Uh, so the first one, they, it was a callback. They told him to do it at a different time, so he scheduled an uh -huh. appointment for that, and I don't remember what that was, but the second one, he actually did close around 9.30 last night, <coughs> Eastern time, so that was pretty interesting. He followed the script. I was reading kind of like along with him as he went, so mm -hmm. that was pretty interesting, and um, yeah. It was what great. market was it in? veteran as well okay so jack be, just between you and me no, no one else in here is really listening but between you and me if sam siegel can do this do you think you can do this yeah for sure okay there you go right no one's saying <laughs> thing to sam right sam was a student sam was a really good guy i like him a lot uh yeah angelina are you feeling better tonight we're all interested yeah much better my voice still sounds terrible but i feel much better than uh, I uh, your voice is fine don't worry about it i'll try not to call on you too much okay <laughs> bukery no buki now you change your name see i you you all got together as a class and said we're going to continually change our names so that he won't know who the heck we're calling on so buki did you work with anybody yesterday i did yes um i worked i I'm under Monty, so if you want to know how my oh, day okay. went. <laughs> no, that's fine. But it was it was pretty good. Uh, it was a long day. Um, mm -hmm. He does just... tend to have long days, right? After training, he keeps. Well, yeah, it. yeah. <laughs> but I I just joined a few different dialing rooms, so it was nice to hear people dial in, um, watch a few different presentations. Um, I asked Monty if I can join his appointment, and he didn't say anything. So <laughs> I, I I like to just. Yeah, I think it maybe it was like private. I don't know what was going on, but I would I like to just learn. So I like to just join. Oh, yeah. Um Absolutely. sometimes I feel like when I'm joining different rooms, I don't know if I'm supposed to. So um, but yeah, I met Ali yesterday. It was awesome. Um mm -hmm. and yeah, just working. Um, I worked with Jaren a little bit uh, after the surgery to get him caught up with the class. So it was it was a good productive day as well. All right. Did you get a chance to memorize your A1 opening? I did. You want to hear it? No, 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 no. Okay. I'm not when, you, when you're that confident, I'm like, no, 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 no. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'll call on people later, but not right now. Matt Nelson, did you work with your upline yesterday? Hey, Sam. Yeah, I, I did. Yeah, we did phone dialing, calling. You actually made phone calls. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Did you get a hold of anybody? Uh, yeah. We did. I, we did it on Monday as well. I, I called, I think, 50 people so far this week, maybe uh -huh. 15 or tw about 20. We I got a hold of. So you called about 50, 20 people answer the phone. Did you set any appointments? Uh, you, on Monday, set one. Um, okay. Last night, no. It was referrals last night. Didn't go so well. And then uh, I did a bit of um, renewal. Is that the proper term? Renewals? Uh, POS, there are POS, yeah. policy owners. Yeah, it's yeah, called yeah. policy owner servicing. It's another market that we yeah, have. Yeah, did a few of those last night as well. Awesome. Well, that's really great. I'm glad you're out that's there. Cool. I love to hear that Monty's working with everybody. He's just a really good guy. I know he he drills hard. He makes sure you know what you're doing by the time you're finished with this class and with him. So you guys are on a really good team. And every team is good. Don't get me wrong. Uh, I just know that Monty tends to keep people late and work them, which is what I would do. Uh, typically uh, uh oh my goodness lou uh, you know what i want to skip you miss castillo no miss castillo can you <laughs> louis setti louis setti what's that louis sadie you could say sadie if it's easier sadie okay so yeah. did you get a chance to work with your upline yesterday yes i did outstanding did you make any calls or listen to presentations i listened to presentations okay and the presentation you listened to, were they in the, what market were they in? Oh, I just watched the link that was online. But with my upline, we were just going over the script till like nine o'clock. Which script did you go over? The, the one we have for homework, the A1 script, the veteran, PA veteran. PA veteran doing the opening, right? Mm-hmm. 
Okay, awesome. That's great. I'm glad. So do you feel comfortable doing the uh, A1 opening without well, they, any assistance? They kind of like changed it a little bit. So I'm still trying to practice that. What did they change? They don't want us to ask questions. And there's a couple questions in the opening. They don't want you to ask questions. Yeah, questions like um, where it says, do you remember filling that out? Um, they don't want you to ask the client to there. Okay. So if you're doing a PA vet, then yeah, you don't, what you fill out is the online form on Facebook. So you're saying that they don't want you to ask if they, if the client remembers filling out that form. Right. Okay. So what do they want you to say? If they don't want you to say that. Just skip it. Just skip it all together. Yes. Okay. So well, let's we'll here. I'm calling regarding the Vero Cad and Wilkit for veterans that you requested in February using the security word of dog. So the last sentence there is, do you remember filling out the request? They just don't want you to say it. Right. They just want us to skip to if yes and read the rest. I mean, yeah, what it says under if yes, the reason <laughs> I'm calling you is your benefits and all that. Okay. So they just don't want you to ask a question and go to no. Okay. I mean, that's fine. If that's the style they want to do, that's great. Who's your upline? <laughs> Justin, I forgot how to say his last name. Working with Mark Dushad. Yep, Dushad. I know Mark. Really, in Mark Dushai's group. Oh, that's yes. interesting. This is Mark Dushai's script. <laughs> so his own people don't want to follow. And again, I defer to your uplines. If they feel that that's going to work, that's completely fine. I don't have an issue with it, okay? Okay. Yep. Uh, Prince, your hand is raised, but your camera's not on, my friend. So I'm not sure what's going on. Are you there? Um so uh, to that question, she was just uh, mentioning, you can ask the question, you, you, can, you can make it like, instead of saying, do you remember filling this out? You, sh you should try to make them to feel like, you know, you for sure of what you're saying. That's what my upline told me. Yeah, that's like, totally you, can, you, you can phrase it like, you remember filling this out, right? But if you yeah, say, that's... do you remember filling this out? And they might say, no, you know what I'm saying? Just kind of try to like impose it on them. Like, you know, for sure they fill it out type of stuff you know what i mean yeah absolutely i, so I have really, again, no problem if you want to use a different technique to do it that's fine but if uh if they tell you hey i have no idea what you're talking about then you should probably say the sentence of hey no problem i'll fill you in what's going on right, <laughs> right. so it's just a different method i'm totally fine with that as long as you know the opening and you're connecting with people and providing your value statement lou uh C sadie did you yes. work on your value statement last night? Not really. Not really. Okay, no worries. Uh, Sava, what can I do? Sava, you're in the dark. We can't see you. <laughs> <laughs> this the is sun all is part of your master so plan, it, isn't it? It reflects. What can I do um, for you? So I have eApp on my computer, uh, but I'm not able to log in. I was contracted with AIL back in 2015. Uh, so I'm working with eApp help. Um, to have a result, but I do not have a, I do not have a login just yet. No, the reason you don't have a login is because your agent ID is going to be different than the one you had in 2015. Yeah. So, but when, um, because of my, so the last four of my social security number, it's connecting to my old account mm -hmm. and we're, we're working on resetting it. So yeah, no just worries. We can log up. in using the training login. So don't worry about it. Okay. <laughs> By the time you're done with this class, hopefully uh, I'm pretty confident that'll be resolved for you. Okay. Sophia, what can I do for you? Quick question. What does PA vet mean? Well, the vet is for veterans and the PA is the name of the third party company that we use to put all the marketing uh, information onto Facebook. So okay. we just shorten the name of the company to PA and say PA vet just to make it like a shorthand. Okay. Can you tell me what the PA stands for though? Uh, I used to know, but I haven't done it so long that it escapes my memory. <laughs> I will ask somebody for you during the break. Thank you. Like that answer, okay? Oh, thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Has everyone had a chance to fill in your DRV report? Because company lost the contract. I'm sorry. Prince, are you uh, sharing something with us? Oh, my fault. I'm sorry. Okay, no worries. I have 41. Submittals for the DRV, and there are 68 of you in here. <clears throat> so please submit the DRV right now, if you would. Shelly, Shelly, 
Thank you for coming back, Shelly. How are you? I'm all right. I have a question about, well, I guess it's, it's not a question. It's a statement. Mm -hmm. I am having trouble getting my um, value statement to flow with the A1 script. And I was wondering um, if you had any pointers on that. Sure, uh, absolutely. So we'll do that really quick with you. Uh, <clears throat> what experience do you have? Uh, have you worked? Because I don't want to know how you are, but do you have experience working? Have you helped people? What are your interests? Give me a little a few facts about yourself. Um, my main experience is um, with the federal government. And oh, sure. you have military experience, right? Being with the federal government for 14 years and with the um, Air Force for six and the Army for three. That's right. So you're not just a federal government employee or ex employee, but you're also a veteran, right? Of two different services. <clears throat> so I forgot about that. My apologies. So if I were you, I would leverage that, particularly in the veteran market, and say, hey, as a veteran of two different services, both the Air Force and the Army, and having worked in the federal government for a long period of time, I am well aware of the number of veterans who have no idea what their benefits are from the VA. I joined this organization in order to uh, be part of the process that informs veterans of what they're entitled to receive and then help them actually obtain it. To me, that's a fairly strong statement because you have the experience being in the military, you know what the federal government is capable or rather not capable of, and yet you still joined us to help out other veterans. Does that help? Yeah, a little bit. I um, So when, as the script is, um, is written, that goes prior to um, the, um, that you reintroduce yourself and reintroduce the company? Well, yeah, so what you say is, hey, my name is Sam Sweet. I'm with American Income Life. I'm a director, I'm an agent, whatever you want to say, <clears throat> whatever you feel is appropriate. We are the company that handles the permanent benefits for all veteran service organizations across the country. As a veteran myself in two different services and having worked in the federal government, I understand how most veterans have no idea what they should be getting from the VA. You see how that then flows right in there? And then once you have your value statement, then you can- Yeah, I see that. That's, that's better. That's good. Because I was so confused as I was working on my A1 as, mm -hmm. as to how I was going to <clears throat> make a bridge. Sure. Uh, I'm not really good at public speaking. So no, no, okay. this is practice for me. That's good. Well, I'm glad that, uh, you know, you asked me, you know, hopefully you can take that and tweak it a little bit to make it comfortable for you and then uh, use that as your opening. I think that builds immediate credibility. I mean, Carrie Burke, do you think that if she said something along those lines that would help uh, build her credibility right from the word go? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Particularly in the veteran market, you are now connecting with these veterans. Yes. Yeah, I think it's really good. Thank you, Shelly. I appreciate it. Uh, Araceli, you have your hand up. How can I help you? So uh, back to Shelly. So you want to say it in your A1 opening, and then do you want to say it again when you're on the Zoom call just to reiterate well, your value statement? Your A1 opening is the Zoom presentation. Oh, okay. I, was, I guess I was confused. I was thinking that's when you are making the calls trying no. to focus the point. No, no, I personally wouldn't <clears throat> go, if I'm making an appointment on behalf of somebody else, I'm not going to say uh, something about me because one, I'm not going to take the time and two, they're not going to meet with me. Mm -hmm. I am released <clears throat> that I'm my own agent. I may throw that in there. It's up to you if you want to do that. But just know that when you get into the Zoom and you're face to face with somebody and you're trying to connect with them, that's where you want to make sure you bring up your value statement. Does that so make sense? So these A1s that we're doing is for when we're on Zoom with them, not yeah, trying to look at them. Okay. That's correct, because in the presentation, which we're going to go over today, there's different sections all the way through that. And the very first section for each market is the opening A1. And I have a few different, I have a couple of ones that say A1 for the credit union. 
one is a Zoom, which is like one, a couple sentences, and then there's, there's a, just the regular presentation. Which one? A1 in the credit union is for Canada, <clears throat> for the Canadian folks in this class. Everyone on the other side in the US is learning the veteran presentation script. Uh, Paige told me I was going to be in the credit union. Paige Schaub, your uh, yeah. essay. <clears throat> and that's totally fine. You can use the credit union one. Uh, I just need to take a look at it because I don't believe it's directly for the U.S. market, I believe. Well, no, it is. Uh, let me take a look at it, okay? Let me do okay, the PA just, let me with everybody. Do you want me to screen share? No, no, I don't want to look at it in hell. I want to park in a lot. Of it. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. So just, uh, is Mercedes on? Mercedes, are you here? Yes, sir, I am. Awesome. Can you put that in the parking lot for me? Because she has a really good point. <clears throat> All right. Do I have any other questions for us to get started with today? Okay. So today uh, we can look at the phone scripts again, if you all want, but I think it may be more beneficial for us to go through the presentation scripts. I'm at the office and I'm muted and my Zoom fell off. Oh yeah. Can somebody put the DRB report up there for uh, Denis? All right. Let me share my screen. I'm going to look at the veteran presentation first okay let's do that all right so here is the veteran presentation on the screen at least i hope it is let me do this let me go back to this here and oh, that didn't work let's see Hold on one second, everybody. I have a little technical issue. Oh, there, that's why. Okay. All right. So we're looking at it. So the way it oh, works here in the veteran script is, in fact, <clears throat> part of what we do the A1 opening. So we're building rapport. We're saying what my name is in that market. If you have a PAVET or a response card, you then pivot to one of those. Okay. Then you go to the A2, which is, hey, I'm going to share my screen with you. Let me know when you can see it. And then I turn my camera off. So whenever I talk about A1, I want you to memorize everything up to that question right there. And then you turn your camera off and then share your screen. Because when you do it that way, people are like, oh, okay, that's what's going to happen. Whereas if you share your screen and then you turn your camera off, it looks like you're turning your camera off. Does that make sense? And again, the reason I want you to turn your camera off is because a lot of you don't know the script and you're going to look at things either over here or over here or something like that. And they're going to, the client's going to see you do that. So the more uh, comfortable you get with the script where you don't need to do that as much, yeah, you can leave your camera on. Usually you'll find folks who do their presentations have been around for a while that that's what they do. They'll leave their camera on. So then we say, hey, this is a copy of the letter that you received. And uh, it goes through the rest of this. So I'm not going to read this out, but basically you're doing number one, number two, number three. And then you say, hey, the service organization is partnered with American Income Life. And you as a veteran, we need to update you on your burial benefits. And then you need to say this paragraph right here. At the end, there's a report that goes back to your state adjutants. So they know I went over everything with you and basically did my job. Uh, does that sound fair? And you can either ask a question or say, hey, does it sound fair? And just keep going. It's up to you. It's whatever style you have that you think is going to work for you. Okay. And then uh, the good news is that you have nothing to write down and memorize. This is all going to be emailed back to you once you wrap up. So two things are happening here. We're telling the client that we're going to submit a report right here and that we're going to email everything to you once we wrap up. Why is that important, Mercedes? Um, well, for me, you know, if I was the client, like I, I would want to have record of like what we discuss. So. Right. So it's, if two things happen there, if you saw something, you're going to send them a, a type of receipt. But more importantly, if you don't sell anything to them, <clears throat> the requirements in this market are that you must send in the report and you need to email the client, the pre-populator, the one that you filled out, the family information guide. So in this script, we're actually saying that that's what we're going to do. In order for us to do that, we actually have to do it. So we need to remember to send the report in 
fill it out with the client, send it in. I'm going to show you how to do that. And we need to remember to download the PDF file with the three little balls that spin. We have to download on to our desktop so that we can send it to them later. Faye, you have a question. What can I do for you? Yeah. Did you say to share the screen and then turn your camera off or turn your camera off, then share the screen? Turn your camera off first, because if you share the screen first, then it looks like you're actually turning your camera off. But most people are familiar with Zoom, like the folks you're going to be talking to. If you just uh, turn your camera off first and share your screen, they think it's part of the process of sharing. That's oh, okay. All. So share your screen first, then turn it off. Yeah, it's a stylistic okay. thing. You guys can do it either way that you want. That works for you. Okay. Please select the subtitle. Okay. All right. Then we get to the AD and D certificate. If you're doing a Pavet lead, you do not need to do this, right? And that was a decision that was made by the leadership. You do not need to show the accidental death and dismemberment certificate. So uh, as I go through the script, I'll jump back and forth. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna display this certificate. And when I do this section right here will actually be uh, the digital image of the return card that the client sent in, okay? If you're doing Pavit, then there is no return card that was sent in, and so you don't need to display this. Anybody have any questions about when to display the accidental death and dismemberment? Okay. So I then close this, and I go back to my script. Say, hey, you listed Sam as your beneficiary. Is that the way you would like to keep it? When you get the email, there's nothing you need to do. It's already in effect. Because once you're done, a automatically generated email will be sent to them from the system, not from you, that will have that certificate in there. Then we're gonna go to the burial and will kit for veterans, share the burial guide. So I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna click right there where it says display veterans burial and will kit. And for all of us who have gone through this now, you know that there's all of this stuff that you need to fill out. Each section has its own pencil, fill out everything that's in gray. If it's not already fill out, confirm the information with the client and then hit the, uh, floppy disk to save each section in case this thing crashes you can pull it back up yeah all right then you're going to turn the page and go through the family information guide you're going to talk about all the vital statistics and then you get to the people to be notified so here's where we're at let's say i've gone through all this stuff here yeah i'm fucking way all right we've gone through all this stuff here then I click on the floppy disk, which is going to save it. And then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to do all this stuff over here. Now, when you are putting this information in, when you do the main contact, you don't want it to be the spouse because you want to get that extra referral, right? As you go through this, what I do as a best practice is as I start to fill out information in number two, <clears throat> I'm cl clicking the plus button because when I get to number three, I'm going to say who's next. So every time they give me another name, I'm gonna click the plus button. So it just shows up and we continue to fill it in. The goal is to get at least three, but the record is 128, I think. The more referrals you get, the better it is for you because those referrals close at a higher level. Their ALP typically is a little bit higher or the same and they show up for their appointments. So I'm gonna go through all this. I'm gonna fill all this in and then I'm gonna to go to the next part of the script, which is emergency contacts and veterans. So I go fill out emergency contacts, best practice. I do the same thing again, keep hitting the plus button. Then I go to the service members, fill that out. If they have other service members, keep going. There's nothing that says you have to wait till later in the script to get additional service members. Anytime somebody tells me they're a member of a VFO, American Legion or something like that, I'm like, hey, let's get this information to all those folks. Now, a lot of times clients will say, well, they already know about this. They're in, you know, they're in the VFW. And then I always say, but you didn't know about it. And quite frankly, only 20% of the people who ever get a letter from their VSO actually respond. And sometimes people go, oh, okay, that makes sense. Other times they may push back. We just have to keep working at it. So we fill all this out. Everything's now good to go. So in the script, we now turn the page. We're at the financial institution. So I'm gonna turn the page. I'm gonna talk about and read the script, all of this information here until I get to the funeral instructions. So the funeral instructions, 
I'm right here. So I've gone through all of this. And then, hey, let me ask you, were you planning on being buried in one of the state or national cemeteries or leaning towards cremation? As you can see, there's a spot for a national cemetery or private. They set up a program benefit for you. They have me cover called the freedom of choice. You will take your cursor right here. <clears throat> and that is the freedom of choice. Once it's up, I want you to scroll down so that your name shows up right here. It's very personal, right? It's like you, now they know you're doing this. It's not just everybody. It's got your name on it. Okay, so you're going to show them that. And then once you're done with the text saying, hey, it takes care of either your birth or cremation, most importantly, all the final expenses come after the funeral. Finish that up. And then you get to, hey, uh, does that all make sense so far? Because we want you to check in with the client because they've given you a lot of information. You want to make sure that, they, hey, does everything make sense? Are you good so far? And if the answer is yes, then you just click off of this and then you're going to go to the next page in the upper right hand corner. You're going to get to the last will and testament. Then you say, hey, the second part is cool. Last will and testament. You're going to go through all of this. In this script, we don't fill out any of this information for the veterans. I believe in Canada, we do. Okay, so we're going to go through all that. We're going to get to the important facts about your burial benefit. And so now we've gone through all of these pages and now we're on page 17. Three important fact. Here's where tonality is absolutely crucial because in the script, it says, hey, the next thing you want us to do now, I don't know if you know this or not, but over 1700 veterans pass away daily. You can put however you want to say this word is fine, whether it's, you know, over a thousand, whatever, however you want to portray the number. But that's a lot of folks who are dying every single day and they're dying. So what we want to do is lower our voice and have tonality to indicate it's a serious subject, right? Hey, I don't know if you know this, but literally over 1700 veterans die every single day. And generally there's little to no veteran benefits for funeral or cremations. So then we use the seriousness of what we're trying to get across. And then we say, hey, your VA benefit book is over 68 pages long. I'm sure you read it to cover to cover and sits in a nice stand every night. The reason we put that in there is that we had a very serious topic and then we wanted to move out of that serious topic. You can do that if you wish. If you're not comfortable saying there's 68 pages in your VA book and making a little kind of joke, that's fine. I don't have an issue with that. Your uplines, uh, a lot of uplines want you to say it exactly that way. It is up to you. Does that make sense, Faye, about how you're going to navigate the seriousness of one topic and then go to another? Okay. Then we say, hey, what they have us do, or I'm sorry, what they did is condense everything down to the three most important facts, number one, number two, number three. You're just reading all this text as the client is looking at that. You can take your cursor and maybe highlight that like I'm doing. And then number two, and then you do that, and then number three. So then on the script, it says, now right now you're entitled up to $300 for a burial allowance. That's what this says right here. This will change. At the beginning of this year, the VA coverage is now $828 for a burial allowance or for a plot allowance. So when that change is officially made, they will update this document with the updated number, okay? So what I want you to do is continue to say 300 until you see that they change this number to 828. Yes, uh, Damon, what can I do for you? Okay, just to verify, you said for that, it was gonna be bumped up to 828 for burial yes. allowance or plot allowance, or is that gonna be 828 for both? Well, it's either, you can only do a burial allowance or a plot allowance, right? Plot right, allowance okay. outside, burial just allowance. Thank you, which way. Gotcha, okay, thanks. So then we say <clears throat> caskets and urns must be covered by the family and this information right here. And then you ask, is there any questions about these burial benefits? Now, sometimes people might have a question. <clears throat> if you become familiar with the day one email in the veteran market, I give you a link for uh, information about those benefits. You can jump there or you can just provide that link to the client. Okay, or you can go back to the beginning of uh, this thing at the very beginning and actually give them the link as well here. See, there's the links all right here. So you can come back here, uh, right there, down there, and you can give them those links there if they have a question. Usually what I give them is this link right here in um, cem.va.gov. 
Okay. So now we've gotten through all of this <clears throat> and we're here and it says download burial and will kit for a uh, PDF. So what that means is once this thing has been displayed and you've gone through the entire thing, you're now going to click the little arrow at the top with the line underneath it. And you know you've successfully done that because the entire thing will gray out and you're watching these little balls rotate. Every market does this. So it's not unique to only veterans. All of you, whatever market you're in, when you fill this thing out, you need to download that because now it's down here and you can open it. You don't have to show the client this. This isn't showing you this for edification and everything's in there. Now, I didn't fill any of it out <clears throat> because we were just walking through it, but there you go. That's what I did fill out. You're going to save this. Best practice is to save it as in a folder somewhere for every single one that you save that says last name, first name, and maybe the date or maybe the name of the spouse or something like that. So maybe, you know, Riggins, uh, the way that I would do it is I would say, what's today's date? The March 9th, I would say 030923. So that's the date. And then I put a space and then I put the last name. And then I would put the first name of the veteran and then the first name of the spouse. The reason that you're doing that <clears throat> is because you need to email it to them. That's number one. But even more importantly than that, if anything happens to your leads and they don't get downloaded properly into your mobile planet, you have them all right here in the PDF file. So worst case, you can always pull it back and make calls to those people. And it's all on your computer. So if uh, anything happens getting access, you still have all that information. Does that make sense so far, Rochelle? Rochelle, are you there? Yes. Okay, gotcha. Does that make sense? I'm sorry. You said it does. That. Okay, gotcha. All right, so we're coming back here. Now we're going to go into the A8, which is sponsored veterans and referrals. So what we're doing is we're stating a problem here. Right, the veteran service groups found that only one in every 200 veterans are even aware of the program and they're trying to educate them all. That is the problem. And then we put more on that with 1,700 veterans passing away every day. That's 50,000 families looking at the same benefits each month, looking for the same benefits each month. And unfortunately, they're looking for them typically after something has happened. Now, the VSOs know they can't reach every single veteran that is. What they ask you to do, John, is sponsor any veteran you know so you can go over the same things with them you know, like the Soldier's Creek. So what we're doing now is we're asking for additional um, leads and referrals, okay? Very important that we do that because we send a report back to all the VSOs, letting them know, one, who do we talk to, what the report card says, <clears throat> and how many additional referrals that were veterans were provided to us, okay? So it's really important we understand that. And then we say the VSOs have found most veterans provide 10. We're just trying to do the Jones effect here. Hey, other people do this. You should be able to do that as well, right? I think I did it with Jack. I said, hey, if Sam could actually sell something following the script, you could probably do that too, right? It's the Jones effect. Then they want you to pull up the sponsorship and enter all veterans on the sponsorship tool. So I'm going to go back to, uh, where am I going to go? HP Pro. Go back here. I'm going to close this. I'm going to come down here. Now, if you click here, the sponsorship program, that's going to show what everybody will get that's in the program. So you can share that with them and say, hey, this is what they're going to get. However, to get to the tool, you got to click on these two little figures right here. And once you click on it, <clears throat> then everybody will be listed right there. Okay. Does that make sense to everybody? Now, the reason I don't show anything here is because, yeah, Buki, what can I do for you? Yeah, I just have to say a question. So I realized in a few different presentations or systems, I should say, that the um, when you fill out these additional uh, names, a lot of people were skipping through the phone number, and I thought that was important, mm -hmm. but they do it here as well. Isn't that just like speed up the process a little bit? Okay. So you're saying that when people fill out the family information guide, they're not taking the phone numbers there. They're waiting until they get to here. Yeah. Um, well, some did, it, some did it like that. Is it just because of just the speed of the process? And Well, it's a stylistic approach. I think uh, some people believe <clears throat> that if you get the names of people and you just go through all the names, then you have a list of, let's say, 10. Then right. when you get to this page, you're now asking for all their phone numbers. It's easier for somebody to pull out their cell phone and go, okay, John, boom, 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 and then 
fill them. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah. It's just a stylistic thing. I personally don't do that because I don't trust computers. I'd much rather get all the information in the actual PDF guide or the family information guide that's going to become a PDF for two reasons. Number one, it's pre-populated. I'm going to send it to the client. So if I include the phone numbers in there, then the client has all the information available to whoever's going to take care of their affairs should anything happen to them. And number two, I have the PDF with all the phone numbers. So in case this thing breaks or HP Pro crashes or whatever, I still have everything that I want and need. Okay. Yeah. And I also realized that um, even on this page, a sponsorship program page, they were still asking, well, do you, do you have any, any additional names? So that was cool. Yeah, definitely. We asked okay. that. Absolutely. Is there anybody else you want to offer it to? Okay. And note on here that if I had names on there, like I have this one here, it's grayed out. So I can't do anything with it. So if we go back to the script and the same thing applies, no matter what market you're in, the, the mechanics work the same way here, where anything you put in either the family information guide or the uh, uh, financial information guide, they will be grayed out. So when we get here and we say, everyone you mentioned in the family information guide will automatically receive access to the veteran benefits we just covered. And they also have access to the permanent benefits we discussed in just a minute. What I want you to do is activate those people as you're saying that. Do not wait to activate them later, okay? And I'm gonna show you why. If we waited to activate them later, the next thing I say is, hey, aside from veterans you provided, the VSOs have authorized you to extend the benefits, even if they didn't serve, and you need to be 21 years or old, employed or retired in good standing. And then we say, because we don't solicit veterans and their families, the VSOs require your permission. And we need to say that. If we didn't activate these, then what ends up happening is the client believes that they have to give the permission to, for us to call anybody. Is that in our best interest, David? No, right? It's not in our best interest. So we wanna activate them and show that all those people are going to get the benefits we just discussed right up here. They're getting that automatically. That's what automatically means. Then for anybody else that they're going to give us, when we ask for additional folks, we're saying we need your permission to contact them. Not that we need your permission to contact the people out of the family information guide, but anybody else you want to give us. Okay. Does that make sense to you, Abby? Yes, it does. Okay. Then we're going to enter the additional responses. And once we have everything entered in here, blah, 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 blah. Every time you enter somebody, Here's a key point. You must put the type. There are two types. One is either going to be a sponsored veteran referral or the other one's going to be a veteran family referral. The sponsored veteran referral is where the veteran has given us names of other veterans. That's the things we have to report back to the VSOs, okay? If it's a family or a friend, then they're a veteran family referral. And then all the rest of it has to be filled out in order for us to do that. And then we say, hey, perfect, I'll let everyone know they'll reach out in the next couple of days. Whatever your uh, <clears throat> upline wants you to do, if they want you to do a three-way text at that time or call two people right away, it's up to you and the upline how you want to do it. I left that open because I don't have a particular methodology on how you should do that. I don't have a preference. I'd much rather you have the upline tell you what works for them and what they've seen works and then you just follow that yes shavia shavia what can i uh do for you um <clears throat> you said that you know when you're selecting which one it is the sponsor is the veteran and then the family right uh -huh. there. um what if it's a family and veteran which one would be the best option veteran Okay. If they're a veteran, you will always select veteran, even if they were a family member or whatever, they are a veteran. That's the number one thing we want to capture, okay, in terms of information to send back to the VSOs. Should, uh, did that answer your question, Savannah? Okay. Yes. Thank you. Edis, what can I do for you? Uh, what if they ask what that total gifted means? What would you say to them at that point? I would say, hey, not a problem. If I, um, well, first I got to get out of this, right? So I want to do that, get out of that. And I would go back and say, hey, <clears throat> that is this right here. 
they get a $2,000 accidental death and dismemberment policy simply because you sponsor them into the program. Okay. Great. Awesome. All right. So then we're going through here. We're going to transition to the readoff letter. <clears throat> Every single one of the markets has to transition into the readoff letter. For us, uh, or for those of you rather in the veteran market, hey, obviously the $300 barrel allowance is enough to take care of it. So what the VSO is asking you, <clears throat> asked us to do is read this letter. When you bring up the letter, you're gonna come back here, you're gonna display the letter, no matter what market you're in, <clears throat> and you're gonna go, if there is a page two, you're gonna to go to page two. In some markets, there's only one page, it's totally fine, show the one page. But in the veteran market, there's always gonna be at least two. And what we're gonna talk about is this language right here, but we're not gonna read this language because those <clears throat> pardon me, those letters change depending upon what association that the uh, client is with, whether it's credit union, McGruff, doesn't matter. <clears throat> all of those letters may be slightly different. So if you look at your script, all you have to do is read this exactly as it's written and you will be fine. <clears throat> Excuse me. Then you transition to the needs analysis. You still leave the letter up. And you say, hey, now what all this is saying is that after I show you the benefits, explain how they work, answer any questions, and you go through the rest of that. And then you say, does that sound fair? You're checking in with the client again. And then when we get here, all of this is going to be the same in all markets. Now, just because you're a veteran or just because, you know, you, I forget what the language says in the other scripts, but basically you can't automatically enroll. You have to qualify. Right? If your risk is too high, they can't let you in. So I just have to ask you a couple of questions first. Then you're going to click on the needs analysis. So you're going to close this. You're going to come down here to the needs analysis. You're going to click on it. And now we all know how to do this, right? Is there anybody that is not familiar with this screen? Which is okay if uh, I'll go through it if I need to. Is there anybody that wants me to go through this screen? Tyra, you want me to go through the screen? Or you have a question? No, I'd like for you to go through it. <clears throat> okay, so the, absolutely. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to ask the health questions, senior combo or super combo. On the left-hand side, the super combo is the default. If somebody is under the age of 60, you have to ask these four questions. If they're over the age of 60, you have to ask these four questions. So let's go back. On this one, do you take any prescription medication? If the answer is yes, then I want you to put a note in here and say, hey, what are you taking? Oh, I'm taking metformin, uh, you know, twice a day, 300 milligrams diabetes. These are notes for you. They're not notes for the client. This doesn't go anywhere. Purely for you to be aware of what's going on with the client. What we want to know is, would they automatically be declined based on the answer to this question? Okay, so then we're going to just say save. And let's say the spouse has nothing. Next one, do you have any health issues in your lifetime? These are ongoing health issues. Not did you break your arm, not did you have a child, but ongoing health issues <clears throat> in your lifetime. Say yes or no. <clears throat> Pardon me, do you use tobacco or marijuana in any form? We need to know that because when we get to the plan generator, we have to list them as a tobacco user if they use tobacco or marijuana in any form. So on this, I'm just going to say no. And have you had any rest, including DUI? That just means we have to fill out additional paperwork when we get to EAP, or if they're a felony arrest, they are auto declined. Yes, Sophia, how can I help you? Yes, just to um, clarify, for the needs analysis, are they seeing the screen with us? Yes, they're seeing all everything I'm showing you right now, they see. Okay, thank you. Uh -huh. Absolutely. Uh, uh, sorry, Jared, what can I do for you? Oh, hey, um, okay, so I have one question. So if it's hard for me to talk it's a little bit from surgery, so I'm trying. Um, uh -huh. So when you put the uh, the tobacco or the use of tobacco and marijuana in any form, does that automatically or fill in that portion on the plan generator or do you need to redo no. it? No, it doesn't. You need to put in and mark TU. Okay, thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Sophia, what can I do for you? No, I have to lower my hand. Sorry about that. Yeah, no worries. Darren, what can I do for you? Yeah, so um, with the last question about previous e-risks, e risks including DUI, 
um, if they have a felony, we just completely cut out the uh, application right then. And then also, uh, if they have a misdemeanor, uh, do we include that also? Yeah, if they're arrested for a misdemeanor, you'll have to fill out some paperwork. If they've been arrested for a felony, then uh, you still go through the entire no cost. You just won't be able to submit an e-app because they're going to be auto declining. You will always have to fill out this page. I'm sorry, Darren, go ahead. I was saying, and that's only for an arrest, like even if they weren't charged. I mean, it doesn't even if matter. If you, if you were arrested for a felony, you were not eligible. Okay. All right. So those are the answers here on the super combo. If you go to the senior combo, if the answer is yes to terminal illness, Alzheimer's, internal cancer, or you've had a heart attack or stroke in the last two years, they are automatically declined. We will not submit an application for the first three. Yes, Anthony. So sorry, back to the felony thing. If, what's it called? Do we still proceed with the felony? Like, do you still proceed with the application or do you just kind of just no, tell them you that? proceed with the presentation Okay. You just know for that individual that has a felony arrest, you cannot okay. submit them under a policy. Just like anybody else, you can go through yeah. the entire thing, say, hey, do you, who do you want? And then say, hey, based on what you told me at this time, I'm not going to be able to submit you for an application because you would be automatically declined due to the felony arrest. But you, they still get all the benefits, including the needs analysis. Mm -hmm. get all of that still, okay? Okay. Benjamin, what can I do for you? There. Uh, does vaping count as tobacco use? Does it have nicotine or marijuana in it? It does have nicotine, but it's not tobacco. Uh, if it has nicotine, then yes, it would count as smoking. Okay. And uh, do they have to explain what uh, drugs they use daily? Oh, yeah, absolutely. They're going to get it. We'll, we'll see it when we go through EF. They're going to have to list all the drugs that they take whether they're illicit or, I'm sorry, prescribed or non-prescribed. Thank you. Yep. Prince, what can I do for you? I'm kind of confused. What does felony arrest has to do with insurance? I don't understand. Like, they are Devin. I mean, like, why are they being declined? Because they have previous felony arrests and they want to try Because the actuary them. tables tell us after 100... 50 years of gathering information, people who are arrested for felonies typically <laughs> die much sooner than people who are not. Okay. Yeah, it's That's all about fun. risk, Prince. It's the risk profile. So when we look at an individual, we're looking at their profile, we're looking at their health and habits. If you've been arrested for a felony, then that tells us typically what our table says is your risk is too high. It doesn't mean they can't get insurance somewhere else. They're just not going to get insurance through American income. Okay. That's what I was going to like. Oh, uh, all right. Yep. Uh, Sophia, what can I do for you? Hi, again. On the same topic, as far as managing the conversation, because it's kind of awkward if they were to answer yes and, you know, that they're not going to be eligible. So um, I know you said to take them through the presentation, but would you advise us to check off yes if it's yes? don't say anything but until after the presentation or should we say at this point well because you've had this you're not going to be eligible you understand what i'm saying in terms of managing yeah, i totally understand what you're saying uh here's what i do and i would want you to check with your upline first of all i'm going to go through the entire presentation to the point where i'm going to show them plans and see what they're interested in the reason i'm doing that is even though i think that they might not be eligible their partner could be eligible they might want to get some coverage for their family, or I can write a policy on the spouse and provide the A71 on that individual, which they can get that coverage. They just can't get life, uh, whole life coverage or term. So there's different okay. things that I could do. I won't know until I get through the entire thing. What I do exactly. know is Okay. Okay. Sorry. Yeah, no, no, it's uh, a really good question. Yeah, and however, we have to remember that this is just the quote, the application, the offer, because it has to be approved by, 
the underwriting anyway, right? This is not necessarily they're going to be approved for this. this. This is just what they're eligible for, and it still has to be approved, correct? That's correct. But keep in mind that you're, one of your responsibilities is as a field underwriter, and you know that if somebody has a felony arrest, that you can't submit them for coverage. So you know that in your head, you're going to go through the rest, you're going to figure out, can you do something for this family based on maybe the spouse or someone else? And then once you're done, then you would have that conversation about them being unable to uh, qualify. Okay. Okay. All right. One more question <laughs> since we're on this topic. Okay. So to say it's yes, and I want to take them through the to the presentation, we'll see what happens. The system will take that yes into consideration at the very, very end to help me no. also see the outcome. No, you are the one that's taking that into consideration, not the system. That, remember, this information that you're putting in here, the answers to these questions, they don't go anywhere. They don't do anything. Right. They're for you to be aware of, oh, okay, they answered yes to the felony arrest. Mm -hmm. Boom. They're not going to qualify. And now you as a field underwriter now need to do the next step, which is whatever you need to do, let them know or put together a program where they're not going to get a whole life coverage, they're covered under something else. But that's part of your responsibility, right, as a field underwriter. If the system just add, ask questions and based on those questions, the client would uh, either qualify or not qualify, and then the system would do the rest, they don't need us, right? <laughs> they don't need us. If somebody wants to buy We'll just ask them, hey, are you interested in insurance? Yes. Okay, cool. Go to this website, fill it out. And there are companies that do exactly that. However, we know that we get higher close rates, more margin, or I'm sorry, more ALP if we use people to actually have these conversations. Because part, part of what you're doing is you're encouraging them to buy something else that they need to protect their family in the event something happens to them. But you got to do it in a way that meets the, re, the standards, the qualification standards of American income. Okay. So am I in sense of a question? I'm so sorry. I have no idea. Oh, who is that? This is uh, Deanna. Yeah, Deanna, go ahead. Yeah, so um, when you're asking the medical questions, let's say the primary is not qualified, but the spouse is qualified. How would that work in terms of the questions being asked? The questions are going to be exactly the same. No, no I'm saying... I like if the spouse and the primary have like two different like health histories, like the spouse is like qualified, whereas the primary is not qualified. Okay. Then when I, when I put together the program, I could say initially that, hey, unfortunately, Mary, at this time, you're not going to qualify because you had internal cancer within the last two years. But what we can do is we can go ahead and take care of the husband and provide coverage on him because he does qualify. Does that make sense, Dan? Oh, yes. And like, has there been like, any issues within that situation where the, you know, the primary would like get upset and like how do you like take care of that because they don't receive coverage? You mean like in my example, somebody has cancer and they're upset because I tell them they are going to not qualify at this time? Yes. And however, their spouse is qualified. Yeah, that happens a lot, quite frankly, uh, with older folks uh, and people who have conditions that are going to prohibit them from being qualified probably already know that. Most times they've asked for insurance for the other people. They can still get coverage. They just can't get coverage with us because of our risk profile that we want. They can go out to you know another insurance carrier who's willing to take on a greater risk and charge them a lot of money. They can still get coverage through them, just not with us. So I've had those conversations where a wife doesn't qualify and the husband does or vice versa. You just have to walk them through what's going on and why at this time they're not eligible or do not qualify for coverage through American income. Deanna, does that answer your question? Oh, uh, yes. And so like, what would like the most professional response to say that? <laughs> oh, what, what is the what? Like what would be like the most professional response in telling that to them? It depends on what they're not qualifying for. Um, or I'm sorry, it depends on the reason why they're not qualifying. So it, if they're not qualifying because of felony, then you got to walk <laughs> down that path. If it's a health related issue, then you got to walk down that path. It really depends 
uh, on what your rapport is with that particular client. I mean, you could be very cool and say, hey, unfortunately, this time you don't qualify. Or you can say, hey, looking at the totality of your situation, we can take care of Mary, John. But unfortunately, right now, because you had a heart attack less than six months ago, I can't provide coverage for you at this time. You wouldn't qualify. However, I can come back to you after another, let's say, 18 months, if that's the number, and we can then get you coverage as long as everything is okay. Or if your situation were to change, give me a call and we'll see what we can do. Okay. Deanna? Oh, yes, that answers the question. Thank you. Okay, gotcha. Nasir, Nasir, what can I do for you? Yeah, I was just wondering, like, uh, what if they lie? You know what I mean? Like, they say they, like, uh, <laughs> they don't smoke tobacco. You know what I mean? Nasir, <laughs> can you turn your camera on for me? Gotcha. Okay. Nasir, are you there? Yeah, one second. Okay. There you are. What's going on, man? All right. So your question was, what if they lie to you? Yeah. Okay. So that happens, but it's pretty infrequently. So people who apply for insurance typically are one of two, uh, one or two categories. Either they just want to get insurance, they know everything, or they know that they may have something that they've been told in the past <coughs> wouldn't necessarily qualify them. People who break the law, as an example, or have a felony arrest may not want to tell you. And so they're signing the application telling you that everything that they gave you as far as information is truthful and accurate, okay? If they turns out that they lied, they will be declined. And when they're declined on the record, they can no longer get insurance through us. And they probably can't get insurance through anybody else because every one of the insurance companies belongs, at least in the U.S., to the Medical Information Bureau. Yeah, and yeah. I'm sorry? They're going to see that they declined or they lied in the past well that they were declined for a reason and it turns out that maybe they had the felony record okay that that's what goes on when i talk to people i generally don't have anybody who's going to lie to me on something they may say <laughs> oh, i don't want to i don't want to tell you i use marijuana every <laughs> single day right or something like that just work with them on that and sh and then when the form comes up in this example of marijuana they have to fill in how often they use it it's not you making the determination it's them and when they fill that out they have to electronically sign it. What you are signing is that the information that was given to you has been recorded accurately. There's no way for you to know whether or not they're telling the truth. And we're not going to hold you accountable for that. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right. Thank you. Sue, what can I do for you? I think I missed something very basic here. If I'm looking at that very first question, do you take any prescription medications? And I think I'm misinterpreting the yes and no's because everybody takes some prescription medications. <laughs> I don't think that's accurate, Sue. I think a majority of people under a certain age don't take any prescription medications. Really? Yeah. Now, when you get to a certain age, there is the expectation that you probably will be taking prescription medications, particularly in the insurance market. Sure, People 60 and older are typically taking some type of medication. Just like you said, we have a solution that we deal with with that. Okay. And when we get to okay. EAP, I'll walk you through what we do. Okay. Okay. Mercedes, what can I do for you? Hey, Sam. So was it the first three questions you said for the super combo or the senior that would be auto decline? If they say yes. So if I click, I'm showing my screen still, right? So if I click on senior, mm -hmm. then what happens is if they have a terminal illness, Alzheimer's or use right. oxygen, internal cancer in the past two years, or had a heart attack or stroke in the last uh, two years, an answer of yes to any one of these questions would mean they would are, are considered an auto decline. We will not provide coverage for them. Okay. Thank you, sir. Yep. And a senior is 60 years or older. Okay. So I'm going to go back I'm just, here. I'm just going to say no to make it clean. I'm sorry. Yes. Was that Deanna? Yes. Um, so vice versa for the super combo, like in what case would they, um, if they answer like yes to like three more questions, would it also consider them like an auto decline for the no, super combo? It, no. Over here, that if you answer yes to any of these questions, it just means we are now aware of it as an agent so that we're prepared when we go to EAP to ask additional questions to fill out additional forms. 
only now there are situations where people under the age of 60 could be an auto decline like a felony arrest but these three questions do not mean that you're an auto decline only on the senior the first three questions are considered an auto decline okay so for the super combo if the answer yes to all the first three questions it may still qualify uh, if they answer yes to these first three questions, I'm not saying that they qualify. I'm saying they're not automatically declined. You don't know okay. if they qualify until you get through the rest of the medical questions. Oh, okay. Is there like a certain amount of questions for the super combo that can determine if they qualify or not? Like Yes, there are. We're going to go through that in just a few minutes, okay? Deanna, is that okay? Yep, sounds good. Awesome. Okay. Uh, Jerem, what can I do for you? Is there, um, so this was kind of back on the, um, they were like basically if they lied about something, they say they lied, lied about something and they sign a paper, everything goes through, and then um, you get uh, you get the ALP or like it goes through to where um, you get paid on it basically. So, uh -huh. Would it be considered a callback if they find out a little bit later? Or, I mean, like, you know what I mean? Like, um, if they find out later that they lied, so would that still affect you if they lied? Yes, of course. Uh, it's considered a decline, not the fact that they lied. <clears throat> they could be declined for anything that we find out in their record, their medical condition, something else. If somebody has declined, then yeah, your uh, advance that was given to you will be clawed back. Okay, so even if like it's not just um if they get trial or like medically or something, or trial or whatever, I think I'm saying that right. Um, it's if they lie to you too. Well, so what I want you to just take the lying part out of your your thought process. It doesn't matter if they lied or not. If we through our underwriting process determine that somebody is not qualified to receive coverage, then they will be declined. Okay. If you had submitted them as a standard application and they're declined, yes, that will affect you. If you submitted them as a trial and they're declined, that does not affect you because you weren't ever paid the advance. Okay. When you submit a, an application as a trial, and we're kind of getting a little ahead of ourselves, which is okay, we'll talk about this when we do EAP, but when you submit an application as a trial, you don't get paid on it until the trial is complete. It takes 90 days. If at the end of the trial, the application would be declined, no harm, no foul. It didn't hurt you. And it doesn't hurt the client either because the declination won't show up on their record. It's when you submit a trial as standard and it gets declined, that's when it affects both you and the client. Yes, sir. That makes sense? Yes, sir. All right, uh, Edis, what can I do for you? So I asked my upline yesterday, like what the max age was. Obviously, you wouldn't want to try to cover somebody who's 85 years old. And he told me it was 80 and 364 days. Is that true? Yes. Well, okay. it's 80 and, and sometimes it, de <laughs> it depends. It could, they could be 79 and 364 days, right? Right, it, right. If it's me, if they're over the age of 79, I'm not going to sell to them because the risk is too high. Two things are happening there. One, they're, they're probably not gonna live long enough to pay it off. And two, the amount of coverage they're gonna get as opposed to how much money it will cost them. Yeah, it's in, it's backwards. Just think yeah. of it, it's really okay. cheap for a 20 year old to get $300,000 of coverage. The exact inverse is true for somebody who's 80 trying to get $2,000 worth of coverage. Got it. All right, so now I filled all this out here. I've gone through this process. So let me go back to the script. So we're right here. We asked all these questions. Now we say, hey, now it's important to understand what comes to permanent benefits each veteran seen separately. We need to say this. We actually have to say that because we don't want them to feel like we can see everybody all at once and get it done. Every program that we do is going to ultimately uh, be tailored to fit them and their situation. Okay. Just like we're saying, some people are going to get declined. Some people are going to be submitted as a trial. Some people are going to be standard. Some people will spend this much. Some people will spend this much. Some people will have that amount of coverage with A71. Some people have this amount of coverage without the A1, A71, but maybe they want cancer protection. So everybody's unique. Okay. 
So that's why we say what isn't right for the one I saw before you may not be right for the one I'll see after you. Then you fill out the needs analysis. Now, once you complete the needs analysis, you're going to hit the pause share button. So now I'm going to pause right here. And I, once that is paused on my Zoom, now I'm going to bring up the plan generator, right? So this was John and Mary. So it's John. Oh gosh, how old is he? John. Can you show the pause button? Sorry, I didn't see it. No, I haven't hit the pause button because if I did, then you wouldn't see everything I'm doing right now. So when you are hosting your Zoom, the pause button will be at the bottom of your screen and it will say pause share, right? It'll have two little lines like a pause button on a tape deck. You press that just like I pressed it right now. So I pause my share. That button will change to the word resume share. If I click on that, then I can resume my share. Okay, you all can't do it because you're not sharing yet. If you were sharing, you would be able to do it. Yes, Anthony, what can I do for you? A uh, quick question, what's it called? Um, while you're paused, is there anything that you would say to the client of like, what's it called? Um, while you're kind of like creating, like be still I'm okay, we just gotta wait for you guys to get approved or something or, okay, I'm sure that creating this part takes a while. All right, so here's what I would tell you. When you're right here and the okay. moment you hit the pause button, let's go back to the script. You're going through the dollar day concept if you are in the veterans market. If you're not in the veterans market, you're going to choose whether or not you're going to do the dollar day or if you're going to do the hour power concept. Okay. That's because we typically say hour power for people that are working and for seniors and veterans, we typically use dollar a day. And then you got to read this. Hey, now the way they set up the minutes for all the veterans using the dollar a day. What I usually do is when I'm right here, I say, okay, you know what? Uh, before I submit this for the system to provide its recommendation, I wanna confirm that everything I just put on here line by line is accurate. Can you look at that and do that for me? So the client then starts that process while I'm waiting. In the meantime, I got this screen up. So as I do that, I'm going to make sure that I go to uh, dollar a day. I'm going to go to $5. Now, obviously, it would already be set up for me, but because I went into pre plan, boom, I'm doing that. Five, I'm going to change this to the triple family. I'm going to allocate the remaining. I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to go into the plan options. I'm going to change this one to recommended. While the client is looking at that screen, I may ask them a question. I may do something uh, enhanced. Right, I'm gonna do that. And then based on where the client is and what they've said so far, will tell me if I need to ask them another question or if in fact, I need to do anything else with them. If I don't it. need to ask them another question, I'm finished. You gotta uh, change your dollar a day. Yeah. Then I'm ready to go, right? Yeah, so you guys are catching me, that's nice. $9, go there, allocate the remaining. So then depending upon where that client is in terms of reviewing the information or whatever, I'm ready to go. I just click on recommended. This thing is now ready. I don't need to do anything else. So if they say everything looks ready to go and I'm done and I'm ready for them, I'm going to unpause my screen. And when I unpause my screen, what I'm going to be looking at is not the benefit summary. Okay. Cause that's too far in the process. What you're looking at is display plan, which you can't do from the plan generator. Okay. So now I went through that. Let's do it right here, real time. So the screen is paused. I'm gonna click on plan generator. It tells me, hey, I gotta fill out these additional forms. I'm like, okay, gotcha. So then this comes up, all the information is there. Five, five, everything looks good. Drop down to triple family, allocate the remaining. Now I'm good to go at 304. I'm gonna to go to plan options. I'm going to rename this recommended and rename the other one, the enhanced. Right. And when I get to the enhanced, just like you guys taught me, I need to change that to nine dollars a day or some number significantly higher so I can show value. The moment I do that, I change the triple family to the highest one available to me. Then I allocate the remaining. I click finish. Then I click on recommended, make sure everything still says the same. And now I present plan. I go here. This is now showing I now resume my share. 
So you can see I did that in what, about 30 seconds? I can fill time in 30 seconds. I don't expect all of you to be able to fill the time in 30 seconds because you're having to build the plan. As you practice this and do it, you'll be able to do it very quickly. What I would do if I were you is I would say, okay, we're waiting for the system uh, to give us the recommendations based on the information we put on the needs analysis screen. If you want to take a quick break or if you want to let the dog out, get a drink of water, whatever, I'll let you know as soon as we're done. It takes about a minute or it, might take, it can take up to a minute. So this way you're giving yourself time and space. If they get up and go, okay, and they leave, you don't have to say anything. But if they're sitting there waiting for you, you got to make small talk. Because I did a, a presentation rubric last night with somebody. It took her two and a half minutes and she didn't say a word the entire time. That's not good because the client's just sitting there waiting for you to do something. So talk about something. Ask them about anything. Get a conversation going because you've built rapport. All right. Now, if I'm at this screen, <clears throat> I come back to the script. I'm going to present the plan. I'm going to talk about final expense protection. In the other markets, we may use information about the A71 first. Okay. It just depends. And what I'm going to do is when we take a break and I put everybody in the veteran market into a couple of rooms, I'm going to put everybody in the Canadian market in a couple of rooms. And I'm going to go through their presentations with them. So it's very similar in terms of mechanic. They just have more information they need to go over. So basically, let me ask you, have you, you had a plan of funeral? Because now we're talking about and coming up with the problem. The problem is paying their final expenses. So we go through all this language and then we say, hey, that's why they have us. Um, sorry. They have us talk about the freedom of choice. Now we're showing this again. We scroll down. So our name is displayed. That's the freedom of choice certificate. We click off of it anywhere on the screen. And now we're ready to talk about the allocated amount, right? So it says show space bar. You can do that. I personally like to use the down arrow. So boom, hey, they've allocated 116,000 for you, John, and 173,000 for you, Mary. I would uh, recommend that you don't come up with the 919 or the 691, simply to make it easier for you to flow through it. Hey, John, you have $116,000. Mary, they're allocating 173,000, okay? Then you indicate what that's for. So you go through all of this. Then you talk about accidental protection and you read the script, you can hit the down arrow. There's the accident, there's the auto accident, there's the common carrier. The reason I use the down arrow is if they say, well, wait a minute, by an accident, what do you mean? I'm gonna hit my up arrow until only the accident shows. Or if they had a question about the freedom of choice or any cause of death, I'll hit my up arrow because I prefer people only to look at what we're talking about at the time. Okay. If I had shown the benefit summary, everything is up there all at once. And so once you start talking about various pieces, they're looking everywhere but what you want them to see. So that's why I use the down arrow. You can use the space bar to do the same thing. You just can't go back with the space bar, but you can use the up arrow to go back. So you get through all this. Now you've talked through. Uh, the accidental protections, and in the veteran market, then we do the hospital accident benefits. In the Canadian market, it's actually reversed. Or the credit union market, we talk about those first. So then you get the down arrow and you get those, right? The 150, the 300, the 600. So everything's looking good so far. We've gone through the emergency room, the hospital stay, intensive care, protections and riders. We have to talk about that. So that is right there protections and riders. You're going to click on that and this will come up. <clears throat> now, if you click on cash value, you'll get an example of how of what cash value looks like. But keep in mind, this is just an example. It is a static image. It is not reflective of whatever plan you're offering them. So most of your uplines do not want you to show this screen. Because if you did, look at all the information on their Mercedes. Do you think a client may ask a question? Very much so, yes. Yeah, they might ask a question. Well, how come I got to wait until I'm 70 and it's only going to be worth 10,000? There's no relativity between what this shows and what they may actually earn. So what most uplines want you to do is talk to cash value and talk to paid up benefits, but do not click on that. Now, the client doesn't know that there's anything there. So if you don't click on it, they'll never ask you about it. Okay. Now the terminal illness writer, I do want you to click on because there's no additional um, cost for that. And it explains what they get. 
hey, you're going to get half the face amount whenever a physician certifies that you have less than 12 months to live. And then to get rid of that, you can just click off of that. Uh, sorry, I missed that. Edis, you have a question. What can I do for you? So yesterday I was watching a presentation where the guy said he didn't want any hospital or accident benefits. Okay. How would you go about kind of getting rid of that out of the presentation that you show them? Uh, is it because of the cost or he just doesn't think he needs it? I think he said he just didn't want it. He just didn't think he needed it. So if I were to get to the point and we'll see it here where I'm going to create a plan specific for, specific for him, I can take out the A7-1. I can unclick it. The problem is when you do that, you remove all of the accidental death and dismemberment benefit as well. So now what the only thing the guy's paying for is a whole life policy. So the value proposition is tougher. Yeah, the value of the, of the plan actually just dropped now since he didn't want that. Yeah, so okay. honestly, what I would do then is I would make sure he gets it. I would just lower his cost and say, okay, I'm going to take it out. It's usually about 40 bucks. And I would just reduce his whole life coverage by $40 or whatever it is and let him keep it. Because otherwise I'd have to explain, and I'll show you guys this when we do it, but it becomes really painful if you did that. As a matter of fact, can I do that here? Let me show you here. So let's go to the plan generator. So the guy, I'm oh, sorry, let's go back to here. The guy's saying, hey, I don't want any of this. So I say, okay, if I build a plan for him and take that off, doing exactly what he says, now I got this to show him. That's problematic. I wouldn't do that. I would say, hey, that just comes with it. That's part of the package that you get. And if he hits me on cost, I say, well, I could probably do something to reduce the cost if we come up here and we see the cost is $1,350, okay, so I'm going to reduce the cost. I'll remove $1,350 out of that number right there. So he gets the money that he wants, but he's still going to get that simply because, one, quite honestly, everybody, they're going to use this. They're going to fall. They're going to have an accident. It doesn't matter if they go to the uh, medical clinic, the VA hospital, or whatever. We're still going to pay them $150 for showing up. And if they have to spend the night in the hospital, they're going to get $300. And I will show you when we get into EAP how I can make the A7-1 even more attractive for them by providing what's called a recuperation writer. Okay, does that answer your question, Edis? Mercedes, what do you got for me? Hey, Sam. So I know you mentioned something about breakout rooms and seeing where we're at with time. I think it would be best for us to go out for a break. Okay, give me five more minutes, okay? Because I'm almost yes, done with this presentation. So we've done the, the protections and writers. We've gone through all that. Now we're asking again, we're checking in. Does all that make sense? Okay. So we're still showing what? We've gone through all of this. We've did the beneficiary. We put in uh, uh, Bupi's name because she's going to get paid out. And we go to the benefit summary. Okay. So on the script, we're saying, hey, it's my... Uh, uh, this is the first time we're asking that one more time. We want to make sure that no one's seen the information that I just went through with them. And then we let them know, even though your role started a while ago when you filled out your card or when you submitted your request for information, we can't go back and cover you. Okay. We did the beneficiary question. We fit their budget. Now the last question they asked, what's going to fit your budget the best? That's when you're showing that screen. Okay. And then you're asking the question. Uh, some veterans get super excited. They ask you to set aside more. So you're setting everything up to the close. This right here is the closing question. Do you want to do like most veterans do? Or if you're in the credit union market or in Canada, you want to do like most of the members do and go with the recommended program? Or do you want to try qualifying for the enhanced program? Okay. And we've already shown them what the enhanced program is. It's right there. If I had built a third program and called it essential, and it's like $182 at $3 a month for each one of them, or $3 a day for each one of them, what are the odds that somebody's going to immediately go to the lowest cost? Are the odds higher if I'm showing it? Probably, right? The odds are higher, which is why I don't like to show it. Some of your uplines want you to show it. Again, that's perfectly fine. If you want to build it and show it, that's fine. I like the option. You want to choose A or choose B? Because I want the client to be in a position where they're controlling what they choose <clears throat> or they tell me, hey, can't really afford it, okay? So if I'm right here and I've done the closing question 
and then we're going to take a break. The next thing I want you to do is if the answer is, hey, Mercedes, I really can't afford $304 a week. What I want you to say is, hey, that's totally fine, Mercedes. I completely understand. So you're acknowledging it. And then you're going to ask a very simple question. What makes sense for you and your family? Because if you've done a good job presenting value throughout the entire presentation, and I've probably said this before, right? 80% of the time, people that are inclined to buy will give you a number. If you can get a number or a budget out of somebody without having to use, use the word cost, expense, or budget, now you're not sounding like a salesperson. You're sounding like somebody who's there just to help them out, which is what you are. Okay. If in fact they say, hey, Sam, I can't afford, you know, X amount. And you ask the question, okay, well, what makes sense for you and your family? If they give you a number and they say the number is, let's say $200, what you're going to do is you're going to say, hey, not a problem. Let me see what I can do. Remember the whole time in any one of our scripts, we have been saying recommended what the members do what the associations do, what the VSOs do. Now, at this point, you are the one that's going to solve their problem. You're going to be the hero of the heroine, right? If they tell you, hey, I can't afford the 304, you're going to leave it right here on 304. You're going to pause your screen. You're going to bring up your plan generator. You're going to go into plan options. You're going to add a next plan option, and we're going to call it John's plan, right? John's plan is going to come up over here. There it is, 547. We want to make it one higher than what the recommended is for this A71 product, which means that should be what? Quadruple family, correct? Quadruple family. And now I want to change the analysis approach to monthly. And I'm going to put in a monthly number. So he said what? 200 bucks, right? So I want you to go 199.40 or something like that. Something just below what he said. And then I want you to allocate the remaining. Because when you do that, now you've built a budget at 199.4. You've spent 199.4. You are ready to go. You're going to click on John's plan so that it's showing. And then you're going to go back to the benefit summary. John's plan, and now you're going to reshare your screen. And when you reshare the screen, you know, this comes up, and then you say, hey, John, great news. I was able to do this for you. I got you in at 199.4, just below what you wanted. And then if we look, the big red number is 308, 180 versus 386. So I only lost him 70K, but I reduced his amount by over $100. Now, Buki, if I were to do that for you and I solved your cost objection, would you be more likely to buy? Yes. Maybe so, right? And at that point, if they want to buy, great, you're going to move on to the app. If they still push back, then you're going to go into the last page of the script, which is here where you're gonna down close and you're gonna go through all of this. Hey, you know, one, there's usually th three important questions. Do you understand? Or do you believe the program is something you would use? Is your family better with it or without? And you're saying the money's not affordable or is it taking food off the table? Because if it is, I'm not gonna let you do that. So now you're taking ownership, okay? If they give you a pricing objection, now you go through all of this. This solidification down here is at the very end when you're done with EAP. That solidification is basically saying, hey, what did we do today? What did you sign up for? How do you feel about it? Because you don't want them to cancel. So you want to make sure they understand what they did. Awesome. We just went through the veterans presentation. I'm going to uh, Mercedes. We're taking a break, right? That is correct. All right, let's take a break. It is 20 minutes to the top of the hour. Come back at five minutes to the top of the hour, everybody. Thank you. All right, we're back, everybody. Here we go. We got Betty Finnegan, never left. We got Clayton, Kurt, Caitlin, Christy, Crenshaw, Abby, Matt, Gianna, Jeffrey. Everybody is coming back. That is good, good stuff. 
I absolutely love it. Let me take a look at something here. Bum, 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 bum. Benjamin Graham. Benjamin Graham, are you here? Benjamin Graham. Benjamin. Benjamin, can you hear me? I don't see Benjamin. Is Benjamin here? There you are. Benjamin, can you hear me? Benjamin, give me a thumbs up if you can hear me. Okay. Uh, can you unmute yourself and tell me who your RGA is? Oh, you're typing. Okay, hold on one second. Let's see what you're saying. Oh, I have to unmute everybody. Again, a technology challenge on my part. Oh, uh, my gosh. Sorry, everybody. All right, Benjamin. Sorry about that. Who's your RGA? <clears throat> RJ, um, is that regional general uh, agent? Yes. Uh, I believe it's Rachel Fleming. Okay, she is that uh, who she work for? She works for Brad or Brandon Summerton, right? <clears throat> so Brandon Summerton is your uh, regional general agent. Okay. So when you fill out the DRB, that's what you're going to put is Brandon Summerton. Um, <clears throat> Nick Richardson. Nick, are you here? Nick yes, Richardson. There you can you turn your camera on for me for a minute, Nick? I'm actually at work. Sorry about that. What work are you at? Uh, are you with us with American Income? Yes, but I have a, another full time job. Yes. Oh, okay. Got you. Who's your RJ? It's not listed. So I want to make sure I put that in there for you. Is it Josh Olin? Jillian Getz. Jillian Getz. Jillian yes. Getz is your RGA. Okay, so that means uh, she. Is, I will list her so that you can put her name in there from now on, okay? Okay, thank you. Yep, absolutely. Jillian Getz for Nick Richardson. Awesome. All right, do I have any questions about Richardson for the, uh, any questions regarding the mechanics of how you present using HP Pro through the process of uh, combining your script. Everyone's got this cold, right? Everyone is good. Danny, you got this down. Jade, you got this down. You're ready to go. Is that what you're telling me? Danny and Jade. Danny Martin, Jade Johnson. No, sir. I, I wouldn't say 100%, but uh, I understand the okay, basics. You understand the mechanics, but all you really tell me then is you need more practice, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Jade, how about you? Um, yes, I do understand. I just think that there needs to be a little bit more of the, um, understanding from the Canadian side because the majority has been for the veterans. Yep. And I'm going to jump into the Canadian side right now. I'm going to put all the veterans in another room and they're going to practice. Uh, let's see. Somebody had their hand raised. What happened? Did I lose them? Did I lose them? Did somebody have your hand raised? Ruth. Was, there you go, Ruth. What can I do for you, Ruth? It, it was me. I, I, I'm catching it. Um, I explained to Monty earlier today that, and I, I don't really want to put my business out there, but in 2021, I was in a hospital with COVID for six months. So uh -huh. I'm processing this, but I'm processing it a little bit on uh, catching it. I'm slowly, it's not as quick as, I'm not as young and I'm not as quick. So I'm getting it. But okay. I do understand the process. I just have to get myself familiar. Totally understand. With it. All I'm looking for is if you understand me the mechanics. If you if you understand everything I went through, I know it's going to take people various amounts of times to get comfortable to smoothly transition, and that's why we're here. We're going to practice that. Okay. Okay. All right, Gianna, your hand is raised. What can I do for you? While we were on break, um, I don't have the phone number saved in my phone, but someone texted us a new. Uh, PA vet phone script. So I don't know if that's something that's going to be across the board or if that's just from my team, but I just wanted to bring that up. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. Go ahead and uh, send it to me. Sure. I'll take a look at it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Gianna. Uh, Faye, what can I do for you? 
when you are saying about the protection and riders, did you say be careful and ask our upline what they want us to present? Well, no, what I said is that most of your uplines do not want you to show the paid up value or the cash value. So just the third one and down. The third one, the terminal illness rider, because the first two are just an image of what it looks like. It actually causes a lot more questions than provides an answer. So if you read the text in the script, the client will see where it says, you can show them up above where it says uh, cash value and paid up value. And then when you get to terminal illness rider, you can click on that and show them what that looks like. So we... So we do click the protections and riders or we don't, or just go to the terminal illness rider. That's it. Uh, so to be clear, what you're going to show them is, uh, let me, I'm, I'm, hold on, I'm sharing my screen so that I can get. So down here, you're going to click on this button, this icon. Okay. And that will come up. Oh, I didn't see up, that far. You oh, okay. don't have to show the very first two. In this example, it's not showing it, but when you do it, it will. It'll show the first two. Oh, so they're, oh, okay. But you have to click protection riders to yep. get to the terminal illness rider. Exactly. You oh, got, got it. it. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, no worries. Ruth, what can I do for you? Um, I'm, I'm actually doing a little sample one as, you, as you're going along. And how do we determine what, like, let's say the recommended, the enhanced, what the whole life amount will be. How do we determine The that system amount? is going to do it for you when oh, you put yeah. in the dollar a day. Okay, all right, that's all I wanted to know. Thank you. Now, so just to be clear, that's for us to learn how to do this and as we get it. Next week, we will start modifying numbers based on certain scenarios. But for now, I just want you to feel comfortable with putting in a dollar a day amount and then getting a number, okay? Uh, Faye, your hand is still up. Are you good? Yes? No? Maybe so? I'm assuming you're good. Okay. So I've opened up all the rooms. What I would like everybody to do who is not in the Canadian market, I would like you all to pick a room and go in there and distribute yourselves. And what you're going to do is you're going to practice going through the script from A1 all the way through to building the plan or building the options, okay? So you're gonna be in different rooms, you're gonna help each other, you can share your screen if you wish, things of that nature, but this is purely practice time for those in any market other than the Canadian market. So you can pick whatever room you want, you can go in there. Once I'm finished up with the, uh, Canadian folks, then I will jump into various things. If you need my help or have a question or run into an issue, you can ask for me by raising, not raising your hand down, go below, you can say, ask for help, okay? So everybody here is gonna go into whatever room they want and they're gonna practice together and anybody can share, anybody can help each other. So all of you, please go in there unless you're in the Canadian. <laughs> everybody back in the class let's see how many people do we got in here we got 66 of you so that looks pretty good at least for now what we're going to do is we're going to open up the attachment number one AO international new agent packet please open that up on your desktops or if you print it out let's look at it attachment number one the new agent packet And Faye, I'm sure you got this, right? You ready? You're solid, you ready to go, Faye? Yeah, one second, it's loading up. Okay, so while we're waiting, you wanna give everybody your A1 opening? Uh, sure. No, you don't have to. I just wanna Thank know. God. <laughs> Anytime I ask somebody, they're like, uh, yeah, and they start to scramble to look for it. I'm like, okay, you're yeah, not quite there yet. That's fine. I'll That's get it. fine, don't worry about it. Just keep practicing exactly what i'm going to do all weekend there we well okay <laughs> okay that works all right are we all there does everybody have it open michael sanders you're going to be the one that determines if we're ready to move forward do you have your new agent packet up and ready to go i'm all printed out 
Look at that. He's on top of his game. All right, everybody, I'd like you to go to page 31. And I am going to share it so that you can take a look at it on the screen as well. These are the products that we offer. Now, we may offer more, don't get me wrong, but these are the ones you should definitely know about. So if you have a question, please raise your hand because I'll see that pop up on my screen and then I can stop. Okay. First thing we offer is a whole life products improved in all states and all provinces. It includes the freedom of choice, which we've walked through when we understand how that works. It's a certificate the family takes to a funeral director or funeral home, and they assign a certain amount of money out of that policy, and then we pay them directly within 24 to 48 hours. Right? For whole life, there's four different bands. There's the whole life. So basically, it looks like this. You've got whole life in its totality. Well, let me do this. Whole life. And then within that, you've got the base whole life. Then the next band is preferred. The next band is executive. And the final band is select life. When we go through EAP, you will see what I'm talking about and what the bands consist of. But just know right now, there's four bands. Typically, we issue policies from the age of zero all the way up to 80. If you're 60 or older, then you're a senior graded whole life policy. Keep in mind that we're managing our risk with seniors, and we do that in a couple of ways. First, the maximum you can give to a senior is $34,999 in, in its entirety. So if somebody bought me, sorry, if I sold somebody $10,000 this year and they came back next year, Faye, how much could I sell them max? Uh, 10000 so 24499 Uh Matt, is that correct? Me? Yeah, Matt Nelson, is that correct? Mm, yes, 35 right. max. So if you gave That's them right. 10, it's a max. 25. Yeah, yeah, sorry, you said max. The, and it builds cash value, right? The other way is we grade it. And we grade it by saying in the first three years, year one, we're going to only pay out 25% of the face value, year 250 and year 375. Because the actuary tables tell us that if a senior lives at least three years by the time they, when they buy a product, if they live for three years, they're probably going to live for 10, which means the product would be paid off. Our risk is low. If they die in the first three years, then we only pay out a certain percentage, thereby lowering our risk factor. Okay. A whole life product never expires and the rates remain the same throughout the duration of the policy. Okay. The thing that definitely affects the rate is if you smoke or not. Second product that we offer is a 10 year renewable and convertible term. That's improved in all states and all provinces. And basically what it says is for 10 years, you will have a term product and the premium does not change. At the end of 10 years, it is automatically renewable. You do not need to provide additional proof of insurability. It is also convertible. That means any time before uh, the 10 years are up, if the client wants to convert it to a whole life policy, they can. And when they convert it, we do not ask for any additional information about proof of insurability. Okay. However, it only goes up to age 63, which is why in the veteran market, we don't offer it because typically there are 60. And so it doesn't make any sense to try to give them a 10 year RNC. Okay. You could sell that policy by itself if you wanted to. You don't have to sell a whole life policy. You can sell a term along with the A71 or a term by itself. But Abby, Abby, would you ever want to sell a term product to your client? No, because they don't stay. Who doesn't stay? The client or the policy? No, so the policy only lasts for like, what, three or four years? A term life policy is yeah. 10 years. Oops. But I then after that, that, it's gone. Well, after that, it automatically renews. So the policy could stick around, but it's not in the client's best interest to buy a term policy, is it? No. Right? Because it's... There's no cash value. So every dime they're putting in, they'll never see the return on that investment. Next one is the ADB, accidental death benefit. We issue it from age five to 64. It's only for an accident. Doesn't matter what type of accident it is. And the max coverage is $200,000. And oh, by the way, it expires at age 70. Why, Faye, does it expire at age 70? Um, because 
people 70 and above will most likely die from natural causes? That's well, yes, that's true, but most of them are going to just die. That's really yeah. the issue, right? So we don't want to pay out. I and mean, again, we're managing our risk after you turn 70. We don't want to have that 200,000 sitting out there. Waiver of premiums approved in all states and provinces, ages uh, from 15 to 55 are issued. What it does is it waives the premium when the insured has six months of total disability. So if I get injured and I'm totally disabled, I still need to pay my premiums for six months. But what happens then is I can go back and get reimbursed for that six months of premium payments. Okay. So that's what a waiver of premium is. We talked about the senior graded whole life. We do that from ages 60 to 80, separate application. Max is 34,999. It's graded in the first three years. And here's an example of how that works, right? 25 in year one, 50 in year two, 75 in year three. In year four, the full amount is paid on the face amount. We have something called the B2000. That's a special accidental death benefit. Ages are from five to 72. It expires at 75 and it is locked at 10,025 and 50. Okay. Then you have a children's writer. Children's writer, by the way, I would prefer that you never sell a child's writer. And I'll explain to you why. If you put a child's writer on someone else's policy, then they can get up to $10,000 if that child dies. It lasts from 14 days all the way up to 18 years of age. It covers that child until 21 and then it expires. It is convertible to $50,000 at age 21. It's guaranteed to convert regardless of the health or habits of the child. However, it has to be sold with the whole life product. So typically you're selling a parent and a parent then wants to put a writer on there, okay? The thing is the writer cost is roughly about the same it would be for a head start, which is the very next program. Look at the differences between the two. This is just a writer. If that person dies who has the whole life policy that the writer's attached to, then what happens? The policy becomes paid up until age 21 and then it goes away. It doesn't last. Most people do not die before the age of 21, right? They tend to live a lot longer. So the Head Start product is a whole life coverage on the child, whereas the writer has nothing to do with coverage on the child. All it's saying is if your child were to die, we're going to pay you 10000 But once they hit 21, it goes away. With a Head Start program, you issue it anywhere from 0 to 17. You can include a guaranteed insurability option, which means that that child, when they turn 25, they can add an additional $25,000 of coverage and they don't have to disclose any of their health or habits. And they can get that $25,000 every three years from 25 to 40. So in effect, you're guaranteeing that that child can get $150,000 in coverage. Now they still have to pay for it. It's not free, but let's say that it's me. And let's say that I get married and my wife has a history of breast cancer. Okay. I probably want to make sure that my children have a Head Start policy so that they can get this guaranteed insurability option because they may end up having the breast cancer gene. If you were to do this, then that daughter of mine is going to be covered with her family, even if something were to happen downstream. She can still apply for and receive the $25,000 every three years of 25. So to me, the Head Start program has a lot more value for the money you're going to spend. And you're setting your kids up financially. Does that make sense to you, Abby? Yep, it does. Jade, what can I do for you? Um, so I know that you mentioned that uh, you would recommend giving out the children's writer as an option, but of course, Children's writer is there, which obviously means that it provides value to someone for whatever reason. So would the case be for a children's writer to be used because the child has a limited time to live, like they've been given a diagnosis for 10 years to live or? No, because if, uh, if a child is, has any medical condition or is taking prescribed medication, they're not insurable at all. 
So in what case would the children's rider be used and of value to someone, to a family? The value would be if, so sorry, when I said they have, they're going to be declined, that's a Head Start program, okay? So I couldn't sell a child or the parent's whole life on a child if the child is taking prescription medication or has any medical condition. But right. I could give them a child writer because our risk on that is only $10,000. Whereas the risk on a Head Start could be a lot higher than that. So that's when I would use a children writer. If they don't have anything wrong with the kids and they're taking prescribed medication, I am gonna to talk to the parents and be like, hey, we, we wanna do is two things. One, we wanna provide coverage on the child, but more importantly, I wanna make sure they're set up for the rest of their life financially by making sure that we get the rates locked in when they're what, one year old? for $25,000 in coverage and give them the ability to purchase additional insurance when they turn 25. Most parents will look at that and go, okay, well, how much does that cost? And I say, well, maybe I'll look at it, it's $11. And they're like, okay, well, what about a child rider? Well, the cost for a child rider is $8 a month. So you're looking at $3 a month extra and you're providing much more protection for your child for the rest of their life. Does that make sense, Jade? It does. I would just need an example, but I'll ask my upline for another example. Yep, I'll give you other examples. Again, if the so tomorrow you can tell us what your upline said about when they would sell a child a child's rider. Okay, now, not that that you should or shouldn't. I'm just my preference is that you sell a Head Start as opposed to a child rider. There's much more value in a Head Start for everybody, including you as the agent, than there is in a child's rider. Okay, then you have term to 65. Typically, we do not sell these. They do exist. So you may see these in policy portfolios. Uh, and they are available, but in what we do here, we don't sell that in AO typically. Okay, so term to 65, term to 100. Then you have a 15 or 30 year decreasing term and a 20 year level term. Uh, Faye, let's go back to you. Why would I not sell a 15 or 30 year decreasing term anymore to cover mortgage protection? Why wouldn't you? I thought that was a good idea to sure. get... It was a good idea 10 or 15 years ago, but how long do people stay in their homes anymore? Not that long, actually. They you mean like people are buying different houses? Well, that's one thing, but the number one thing is people do what? They refinance. Yeah, so if they refinance, this wouldn't consider covering their mortgage? No, because you bought it for a certain amount of money to cover the mortgage originally, and then 10 years from now, you refinance, your mortgage is no longer protected. So oh, I didn't know that. Help you. Yeah, I mean, it's not going to, the level or the amount of coverage is not going to move up simply because you decided to refinance and have a larger debt, you'd have to go and buy another policy. Does that make sense? So that so it's not covering your house unless it was just mortgage one time. But if you refinance this, this doesn't apply to it. Well, no, it would apply, but it only apply for the amount of money that you originally had. So let's say I bought a house for two hundred thousand dollars and I bought this policy. Ten years go by and I refinanced it, and now my debt is three hundred and twenty thousand. Okay, this policy would only cover the original two hundred thousand, oh. not the additional one twenty. So because of the change in society and how we no longer stay in homes at the same mortgage rate, this product doesn't make a whole lot of sense anymore. You may still see it. And the way that you would see this now uh, is in a situation where someone older has bought this product and they just kept it. If we want to protect your mortgage now, we don't protect for the entire 15 or 30 years. We only protect using the 10-year RNC for 10 years. So that way, if a husband and wife are together, you're protecting the mortgage. If the husband dies or the wife dies, you have enough money to pay off the mortgage because we believe more often than not, if you go beyond 10 years, you're either going to sell it or you're going to refinance it. Yes, Matt Gwynn, what can I do for you? Thanks for taking my question. Um, so with the housing market, could that change? Obviously, right now, 100% on board. Uh, yeah, you wouldn't sell that with the way it is now. Now, when it levels out, Say when my parents bought a house, you know the the rates were a lot higher. Um, mm -hmm. So if, you know if they jump back up to double digit rates, then would it make more sense for the fifteen or thirty year decreasing term to come back? In my opinion, no. 
I'm not a big fan of the, and I'm just going to give you my opinion from an art perspective. How much money do you think I make on this policy? What it, so whatever number I make, it continues to go down every single year when I get renewals, right? Because the, it's a decreasing term. So right. by the time 15 or 30 years are up, it's gone. So in my mind as an agent, if I sell a 10 year RNC, I still have an opportunity to convert that to a whole life product, which is a much bigger upside for me than a 15 or 30 year term. Okay. And when I couple that with the fact that even if the mortgage industry levels out, you're still going to have a lot of people who are going to refinance to pull the equity out. There's, they, they're going to lose the value of this product. That's why we're seeing this product decrease in usage. Got it. Thank you. Yeah. Then you have the 20 year level term children's college education. You could add that in there if you wanted. It's all up to you what you want to do. I guess in Quebec, we can't do that at the time that this was created, check with your uplines if any of them want you to ever offer this product. Then you've got the A71. This is the one we do offer everywhere under the sun, right? The base is $50 for the emergency room, $100 a day for hospital admittance. And if you're in the ICU, it's 200. And then we double, triple, quadruple, quintuple, or in Florida, we sextuple it. So one through six, we multiply that times the base rate to come up with all the information. The base for the accidental death payout, so accidental, any type, auto, common carrier is 10, 20, and 50. And then that goes up every single time you move the $100 up to one, to two, three, four, five, six hundred dollars $600. Okay. Now we call it the A7-1000. We refer to it as A7-1. In different states in the US, it has a different nomenclature because of the language that has to be used, but it's pretty straightforward. The A7-4000 is an accident policy, except in Canada, we could potentially sell this uh, out. However, we recommend that you use the A7-1, okay? Because the A7-1 allows you to multiply this factor based on how much they wanna pay, right? So we can go to double, triple, quadruple, quintuple, the A7-4, you're locked in here. You can't go any higher than that. Critical illness policy, we could sell this as well. Basically, this says if you have a heart attack, stroke, end stage renal failure, or a Morgan, Morgan, huh, a major organ transplant, or total loss of hearing, total loss of sight in one eye or one ear, then this would pay out. There are only three benefit amounts, 10, 25, and 50. We don't offer that as part of the training course because we want you to focus on the whole life product, the 10-year RNC, and the A71. However, if in fact, I have talked to somebody who has a history of heart conditions in their family, I'm probably gonna throw this in there, okay? So talk to your uplines if uh, they want you to do it, but right now, focus on the other ones. If you wanna add that in there when you're practicing whatever, feel free, go right ahead and do it. Then you have C2000, which is your lump sum cancer plan. Again, everywhere except California, Virginia, and Manitoba, 18 to 64. There are only three payouts, 10, 25, and 50. And the cancers they do not cover are skin cancer, carcinoma in situ stage of uh, uh, Hodgkin's disease or prostate cancer or melanoma that's considered Clark's one, level one or two or Breslow. And those are in fact, the policies that we typically sell in everything that we do. Do I have any questions about these policies? Yes, so, Matt Wynn, go ahead. Um, out of all these policies, is this something that the clients are receiving beforehand? Are they knowledgeable about these all these different policies or kind of have an idea of what they want, what we offer? <laughs> Matt, <laughs> I'm sorry. Matt, that's your job. <laughs> Well, yeah, I mean, to explain, I just didn't know if they have like a welcome packet kind of thing. I know. No, I they're not going to do they, they get nothing. What they're getting, if you're in the veteran market, they're getting the response card or return card. And all of a sudden you're showing up in Zoom and you're giving them all this stuff. And then you're talking about the products and recommendations from the VSO. If you're in the Canadian market, same concept, except it's going to be the legal will kit or McGruff. They have no idea that you're probably going to talk about insurance. 
Literally, they have no idea. That's our job is to figure out what makes sense for them, build the options in HP Pro, and then present it in a way to make it uh, something that they feel they can't live without. All right, got it. <laughs> so sorry, man. I didn't mean to, to laugh. I, I've <laughs> no, never no. had that question before. No, it's fine. Well, because in the past, I mean, I, just with the, some uh, products I've sold in the past, we've sent out like a pre-mailer or companies have sent out pre-mailers to kind of give them a heads up on, you know, yeah, what we'll do that. The offering. Got it. Yep. We don't spend the money to do that at all. So there's uh, no buyer's guide. I'm so sorry. Who is that? <laughs> Sophia. Oh, I'm sorry. What'd you say, Sophia? So there's no buyer's guide that we send out. No, there's no buyer's guide. There's okay, no not marketing for this market. collateral. Okay. Any, anything that we do in American income, we're not sending it. I mean, they can go to our website and we have some language that talks about what we offer, but there's nothing that's a uh, direct to consumer marketing program that gives them information about all of these products. Okay. Thank you. Yep. John Houston, what can I do for you? So can you show us in HB Pro if I wanted critical illness added to the policy where we would add that at? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, can I do that? That's a really good question. Hold on a second. I think I can. I think I can. Let's go to share my screen. We come here. If I want to add those additional products right here, there's a button with the word additional products. If I click on it, then I can add these additional products. So there's the cancer product, there's the B2000. If I wanted to add a spouse writer, which is very similar to a child writer, I could do that. And then if I wanna add an additional 10 year RNC to Mary in this case, I can do that here. And I can select whether what the reason is that I'm adding this additional uh, 10 year RNC. So that's where you would go to get the additional products. Yeah, okay. there's, is there more? Because I only see three products there and there's like 10 products over here. So C1000 or C1 is the critical illness one. Where would that? That is not going to be here. That is going to be in the e-app is where you would, and when we do e-app on Wednesday, you're going to see all of these products in there that you can talk to. So the, the the price of the product per month would change in e-app. So there's another one. Well, if, so to answer your question, if I, for example, wanted to add a recuperation rider, the A71 product, it isn't an HB Pro, but it is an EAP. So when I move the pricing over, let's say it costs them 200 bucks a, a month in this, uh, sorry, close this in here, $200 or actually 304. If I were to go into EAP and do this exact same thing and I added anything in EAP, then the price is going to go up and we just have to explain what the differential is. Hey, it's a $304. If we're getting this, then there's going to be additional price. If they come back and say, well, I still want that, but I want to lower, I want my price to be back at 304.17, then you just need to take some amount out of the uh, whole life product. And that will get them back where you had started from in HP Pro. So I'm, I know it's all theater of the mind right now, but when we do Yep on Wednesday, it'll become clear how you do that. So the HP Pro is basically just a presentation tool at that point. That's so. all it is. For now, we will get to the point that eApp will be integrated into HP Pro so it does everything. But the problem is, is a lot of back-end coding and it has to be approved by all the provinces, states, whatnot, in order for us to use that tool. Okay. okay. Uh, Shelly, what can I do for you? So, hi. So at the end of our presentation with the HP Pro, that's when we, um, we if, if they are interested, that's what, what when we go to the e-app and yes. we add these things, correct? Yes. All right. I just wanted to make sure. Yeah, um, and so then, as you're talking to them, then unless they decide they, they don't want it then that's not the end of our our stuff that's correct like our, our, our okay. e -app if they wanted to buy now keep in mind e -app is going to take wednesday like all day five six seven hours to get through however when you actually do it with a client any of you have watched presentations e -app may take 10 to 12 minutes at the most it is not that difficult to get through 
the most difficult part is understanding all the different pieces and what you're doing as an agent to fill it out. Okay. So it, it's only going to take 10 or 12 minutes adding to your presentation. Yes, Betty, what can I do for you? Okay. I have a silly question. Can you go back into uh, the benefit summary real quick? Yes. Please. <laughs> Yep, I'm in the benefit summary. Okay, so we have homework from our uh, upline. Uh -huh. From that page, where would I download that or save it? How could I save it? I don't know what your homework is. Does he want to see this? Yes. Oh, He's just take a screen capture. You take, sorry, a screen, you take a screen capture of this screen. Okay. It doesn't, okay. this doesn't get saved anywhere anywhere and i mean i'm in the pre-plan and that's how i did it if you were doing an actual presentation and you finish the presentation uh -huh. you could hit the uh, download presentation button on your dashboard which will then give you the pdf file but i think oh, okay. is this monty yes yeah I, I believe for monty if you take a screenshot of this he'll look and know whether or not you did the scenario that he gave you correctly okay just by looking at this screen Okay, okay, thank you. Yes, Jaron, what can I do for you? Um, just to add to that, that to see if this will help Betty. Um, what I did was was take a picture of each. Like, okay, so I'm under Monty's team, but I'm also under my mom because she's being converted. So I mostly go through my mom. But what I was saying is that he, she had me take pictures of each plan and send that to him, and then take pictures of each of the um the plan generators under each one of those too. To make just so he can see every bit of information you put in and grade it. Yeah. So if you want to take a screenshot here and you've got to change each tab so it comes up, you can certainly do that. Right? Is that what you're saying? Along yeah. with the screenshot of the benefit summary, or yes. you can display the plan if you went through the entire presentation, you can do it that way as well. Thank you. All right, everybody, it is the end of our day. It is two minutes past the hour. If I don't have any more questions, I'm actually gonna let all of you go. What is the homework for tonight, Carrie Burke? Okay, so one, we want to continue practicing, including our statements, and then make sure we have access to the e-app and practice, practice, practice. Is there anything else that we need to do for tomorrow? Anybody? Anybody think that there's anything else we need to do? I can add. A video? <laughs> no, you don't have to do a video for tomorrow. Carrie, you said you video can add. Better. You're going to give yeah. us more homework? All right, Carrie, go I, ahead. I give can. us more. <laughs> well, if you have the opportunity to do your dials and viewing presentations. Well, so I'm assuming you're doing that anyway. That's not homework. That's just the rest of your work day. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Jay, do you have any more homework for us? Um, so not homework that I'm setting for us, but homework that you asked us to look at. Um, it was to ask about the 20 year level term of we're supposed to be using it, like our ask our uplines for the products that were shown. Yeah, you can ask your upline on that. Great. That would be awesome. The only other thing I will give you guys, besides doing all the stuff that has already been named, is I will be checking on people's A1. So I will call on people to deliver their A1, okay? Because I need to have confidence that we've got some homework done. Is that fair, Christy Crenshaw? I don't know what that means. Is Christy there? Anybody? Yeah, I'm here. I was oh, looking okay. at the syllabus and if I was trying to press the space bar to unmute and it wouldn't work. <laughs> yeah, the darn space bar doesn't unmute. Okay, everybody, other than that, I, why do you have two Canada McGruff scripts? I do not know the answer to that. I only have the one that I gave you. Maybe it came from your upline. All right, other than that, everybody, thank you very much. I enjoyed the fact you're here today. I will tell you tomorrow what I learned from this class. And as always, I will see you tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. Pacific time. Thanks a lot, everybody. Have a great evening. Thank you. Thank you.